Hi everyone and welcome to the September episode of Trama UI webinars. My name is Karan and I'm the Director of Educational Partnerships at Trama UI. I have with me RJ Thompson of Youngstown State University. RJ, thank you for being with us today. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Go ahead. You can start. All right. Cool. Well, uh, thank you all for, for joining us, us today uh, and hopefully what I have to share with you about uh, designing mobile learning apps uh, will uh, enable you guys to um, start your own. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and just so you're aware, my entire PowerPoint is not all text, but um, at any rate, the point of origin, how did I get into this? This is a, a, a frequent question that I get. Um, from my peers, uh, my faculty peers at YSU, and I simply say I needed to create an access point for student engagement. And I think for any of you, if uh, you're seeking to gain funding uh, or resources or to build your own apps, that would be the best elevator pitch possible. Um, by being able to uh, create my apps for any platform, I'm able to tap into uh, the, the various audiences that I have uh, throughout the day that I teach. Um, and really where they're living on their devices. Uh, I can share with them information, they can take it with them beyond the classroom, even beyond the semester. Um, it's particularly cool to be able to have that point of access with them. So it's, there's a, an ongoing engagement. Uh, for some of you, uh, and I don't know what the, uh, the, the broader technical literacy here is with, with our audience today, but um, you know, it may be safe to say that uh, a variety of us may have uh, experience in, in design or in, in development or, you know, really any kind of uh, discipline communications. But one thing is for sure is that the technical literacy is across the board. And pardon me. And one of the things that I will be talking about today, WIG app builders and how uh, uh, they seek to accommodate all these different varying technical literacies. So what does this look like? What is technical literacy? The ability of an individual working independently and with others to effectively use technology. Um, and every time software is upgraded or a new app comes out, technical literacy uh, seems to be redefined, more specifically how it's measured. Um, and this, is, this will be an important part of the conversation in a little bit. So. Uh, when a new app or piece of software comes out, when it's updated, uh, our technical literacy at times is reset to zero, which puts us all in the same baseline, so there's an equivalent knowledge. Um, I, myself, I'm a trained web designer and developer. That's what I teach at YSU, but when it came to app design, I was just as clueless as uh, anyone else, um, which is a, a refreshing experience to say. Um, but uh, you know, getting from the point of not knowing something to actually getting apps on the App Store, at least for me, uh, was a really interesting process. So I knew the experience but not the principles and practices that defined the positive experiences I was having with the apps and the mobile tech. So I knew how to use the apps. I knew what kind of experience I was having, much like how many of you may have your own favorite apps you'd like to use or, uh, in class or otherwise. You know what that experience is like and you want to be able to build for it um, and of course that's easier said than done. So uh, why mobile learning? Why did I create apps that are focused on students in the classroom? Um, well for me um, it made a lot of sense to, to build these apps just because I teach interactive design and it tells my students that you know this, this technology isn't too far removed from them. They can actually create their own apps. Uh, just by virtue of seeing that I was able to make something for them. If any of you have happened to uh, download any of my apps, number one, thank you. Number two, you'll probably see that the design of them isn't really complex. It's really quite, uh, quite simple um, and, and flat, uh, to use a term that defines the style. Otherwise, um, you know, my app is just this tiny little thing in a market dominated by ed tech startups and companies that have mobile apps, web apps, um, but nothing specific to an individual class or curriculum. So if there's one thing that I can really inspire you folks to sort of um, 
foray into or journey into, it would be uh, to build classes for your, I'm sorry, build apps for your individual classes or your curricula or your department and not use something that is, is broad reaching uh, regardless of function. Here's an example of just some design and uh, I've peppered in a few graphics like this just to show you some of the conceptual development. Um, this is basically uh, a schema for the iconography of the app. Um, this is actually a really beautiful Photoshop template where you drop in one design and it automates it to all the different sizes. Um, if you're going to be making your own apps, I would recommend taking a tutorial or two on Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator uh, just to gain your bearings because um, there are a lot of icons and splash screens that uh, you have to accommodate for. So um, another reason why I wanted to create these apps was a matter of convenience. I don't like repeating myself in class, which is troublesome when I don't have students uh, you know, pay attention to me, so I just say refer to the app, don't ask me again. Um, I can assume that my students, if they're on their devices in class, they are using the app and you know, not Facebook. If any of you are teachers out there, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the app, again, extends learning beyond the classroom and ultimately it strengthens student efficiency, develops opportunities to learn responsibly, intuitively, and with attention. So I can expect my students to use the, these apps that I'm developing outside of the class for their projects, for their homework, etc. Again, another uh, example here. And keep in mind that this is a purely conceptual graphic. I could not actually extract these graphics for the actual icons that I would submit to Apple. The other part to this is the novelty value. Uh, I'm one out of 350 plus faculty at YSU uh, and I'm, I think I'm the only one that's making apps for my classrooms. Not necessarily the only one making apps but specifically for the classroom and the novelty value has been really great and I wanted to share this with you uh, because there's an opportunity here for you perhaps at your individual institutions or, or whomever your employers may be to actually get some seed money or, or some type of granted money to uh, kickstart this development um, for your own apps. Uh, this is not uh, an expensive venture to, 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 to journey into so you know it's relatively low cost. I would say if you could get 500 bucks from your employer then that's probably all you need. Um, so, um, I'm a non-developer, I'm, I'm a web designer, but I'm not, a, I can't code apps, I can't make software, um, I, I can code in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and you know, for, for what I'm trying to do, that's good enough, but that does not necessarily mean you need to know those languages in order to make your own apps. Um, the possibilities for app development are directly proportional to the tools that are out there and available to you. Uh, more specifically, the WYSIWYG tools or what you see is what you get. The drag and drop app builders, you can build your own app in the browser. Um, the more advanced that these get, the better the uh, opportunities you have. And of course, depending on the price, that uh, amazing um, can be available to you as well in varying levels nevertheless. Some of the hiccups I have with the apps that I've made, uh, poor Wi-Fi coverage, uh, spotty cell service, and the American, for Dis uh, American Disabilities Act. For any of you those, uh, for any of you that are familiar with that, pardon me, um, ADA compliance is really hitting academic institutions hard right now, as well as larger corporations. Uh, if someone that is visually impaired, um, for example, can't access a critical piece of information, then that puts a, an institution at risk for a lawsuit. So what's interesting here is while that primarily applies to web design, it's like app design is right on the edge of understanding. ADA knows that app design is out there and uh, needs to accommodate it, but the technology does not necessarily permit for a fluid uh, translation. So just be aware that that may be uh, an upcoming issue outside of, you know, cell or Wi-Fi service. Okay, so 
the the natural starting point for for myself, I began where many of you would likely begin with the app builders or the natural starting point. WYSIWYG app builders come and go. Typically, the good ones are bought by the bigger players, um, which means if you find a great tool, you better start using it and produce quickly because it will get swallowed up. Um, a particular example of this is a uh, is a it was um, a service called App Architect. It came out uh, about two years ago, and it was wonderful. And if you uh, find my typography app on the App Store, um, you'll see that uh, the design of it varies from the newer apps that I've uploaded. That's because the typography app was built with App Architect, which uses the aesthetic from some of the older uh, versions of iOS. But uh, it was incredible. I could drag and drop. I can add links, add video, etc. And most importantly, I could download the binary, which is something I'll get into in a little bit. Nevertheless, uh, app builders, if you find a great one, use it, take advantage of it. And if you happen to have a budget for it, there's no harm in investing in, uh, in a paid service plan either. Uh, why did the app builders work for me? Minimum instruction on design and the actual construction of the app. The app builders themselves had an accessible and an intuitive UI. Uh, most of them started off with tours, so you got initiated on the, uh, the basic tools available to you. Um, if the app builder allowed you to download the binaries and upload those directly to Apple, that's fantastic. Um, most app builders these days do not offer you that uh, because they would be losing a critical piece of, of profit if they did. And then ultimately, if you did need instruction, uh, the quality instruction documents and videos that were available uh, were particularly good. Um, those are so, sort of the four basic points behind why uh, app builders work for me. Um, fortunately, and this may be relative to my experiences, but I didn't need the instruction documents until it came to uploading the app through uh, Apple. Okay. Um, one particular point to note is that many app builders are startup companies that offer beta or free accounts just for using their service, and I'll show you a few of those today. Uh, this typically has a time limit, though, so build your app either before that time runs out, that, uh, that free account, or um, they get swallowed up by a bigger company. Okay, what else worked? Finding free app builds that I could hack up in Xcode. Uh, I definitely encourage you folks, especially if, if you have uh, you know, the time or some type of research uh, expectation on the faculty side if you are a teacher, um, to download Xcode, which is free. Try finding some free app builds um, at a variety of places. Um, Chupa Mobile, for example, Code Canyon, you can find great apps there. And if they do cost something, they are of a minimal, minimal value. Download them, hack them up, try to experiment and learn the software that way. Um, I tend to reverse engineer things to learn, so I'd like to have a fully built construct and then just destroy it and then try to build it back up, um, which is completely counterintuitive to, I'm sure, how many of you uh, learn as well. But um, nevertheless, purchasing pre-built app builds uh, could work uh, for your concept. It worked for mine, um, but at times it can be very square peg round hole, um, simply meaning you can download a finished app, but if you don't know how to modify the code within it, then you're essentially creating a clone of what you bought, which is kind of the point with the template. But if you're looking to have something particularly customized, then um, you, you will experience some difficulty. And ultimately, uh, I own the fact that I was going to have to learn it. I needed to fully invest the time into doing it. No quick answers. App builders uh, were in short supply at the time when I started learning these things. So I really had to put the time in and learn the hard way. What doesn't work, and I suspect that this would also not work for m many of you, uh, based on not knowing who you are, um, I say in jest, but trying to learn Xcode from scratch from a book, don't do it. Uh, trying to learn Objective-C, well, Objective-C is uh, redundant now. It's uh, the, the language to develop apps through Apple is Swift. 
Uh, I have not jumped into that, so I have no idea what that landscape looks like. Um, trying to build an app from scratch did not work for me. And trying to figure out Apple developer provisioning profiles, app IDs, without reading anything about it. Again, this is my own personal methodology, and it's, it can be foolish at times. But uh, these items did not work in. Uh, please learn from me and know that uh, if you're looking to uh, jump into those things, definitely do some reading first. So where should you begin? What begins this process? Like I tell my students, it all begins with your concept. If you have a good concept, uh, define it out. Who's the audience? What are the features you want to offer? What are the future goals of this app once it is uh, uploaded and approved by Apple or Android? Can the features you're offering be used um, via WYSIWYG app building tools? Offering videos, offering links to websites, um, signing up for things. If you're looking for a lot of interactivity, you're not going to find it through those app builders. Definitely draw a sets of wireframes and a sequence of the overall app experience. Um, and then you can, of course, upload that to Try My UI and test that out on a very basic level with, with a, a group of students or a particular focus group, however you would define it. From there, design your wireframes using Photoshop or similar tools. A lot of these app builders have similar tools, although they are very, very basic and the aesthetic is very controlled. So don't expect to have the kingdom at your fingertips. Number five, if you need to hire a developer and or a designer, um, there are a lot of uh, portals out there that um, you know, will enable you to, to find the best people for your app. This is an example of working in Illustrator, preparing all of my app graphics. All of the, the panels you see highlighted in red, or I'm sorry, outlined in red, are um, their own artboards, if you're familiar with Illustrator vocabulary. But um, the ones on the, uh, the left here are either icons or splash screens. So when you open up the app uh, on a tablet, you will see this particular graphic here. The graphics here on the right are just in-app in graphics. And then the graphics up here in the squares, um, those are tints and shades of the base colors. I'm planning on making 18 total apps, one for each class in our curriculum, and that grid uh, parallels that goal. Another example. All right, so continuing with starting out. Uh, start learning and experimenting. Get yourself an Android or Apple developer account. An Apple developer account will cost you $100. A Google slash Android account will run you about $25. So like I said, the, the investment is rather minimal. Start following tutorials. Build, break, rebuild, break again. Give yourself a lot of time to learn, experiment, and break. If you reach a point where you have a functional app, test it in the app simulator, submit it for review, and deploy it to the store. And if you're approved, go celebrate. And if you're like me, uh, after you celebrate and you feel great about uh, this major hurdle overcome, uh, you look at your design and you're automatically not happy with it. So uh, it's a really great uh, point of inspiration to be able to see your app on the App Store and then say, okay, now let's look to the future and build the next version. So at times it's bittersweet. So building your apps, uh, which way do you want to go? Do you want a native app or a web app? Which is better? A native app is developed for use on a particular platform or device. It does not necessarily need the internet to work. A web-based app is developed as a sort of a client-server relationship. So basically a web app may have a native frame but loads a website inside of it. Um, or it runs in a web browser, which is better. It doesn't matter. Um, you'll see arguments online over, you know, native better, web better. It honestly doesn't matter. It really depends on what your goals are and if you can uh, succeed in those goals with the technology that you have available to you. The app builders that you may be using um, will definitely be more web-based, um, but may have some native components, which um, are hybrid apps. So before I get to hybrid apps, I just want to clarify, well, if uh, most apps or if, if uh, web apps are the most popular type of app at the moment, why don't we just build a responsive web design sort of mobile site? Um, and that way we can bypass 
Apple and Android and don't and we don't have to uh, deal with any of that okay the difference is uh, audiences all right um, you can have both um, and in fact I do have both and the app is very concentrated all right it's concentrated on certain information and it's designed specifically for the mobile experience so you have to think about swiping and, and tapping in those touch gestures that um, can really enhance the experience whereas uh, a, a website responsive web design um, can feature all the content and the experiences are really worlds apart so if you design both definitely use try my UI to test out both um, experiences and see what the differences are now hybrids I have both a mobile uh, responsive web design and several apps. The apps that you may have downloaded that I've built or the ones that you see available in the App Store are actually hybrid apps. So much of the content is loading in from a WordPress site that I run on a uh, virtual private server. So I can handle a lot of bandwidth and I can update my app whenever I like without having to go through Apple or uh, Android and this is what most of those app builder services will uh, offer and promote to you except the difference here being you would have to pay to be able to update your apps uh, specifically pay the app builders not Apple or Android essentially you're building a hybrid app and that app building company is hosting um, your website for lack of a better word and then it's shown in an app context so what are the benefits to hybrids? Easy updating, you bypass the App Store for review and approval. Um, coding that creates web browsers and apps doesn't change all that frequently, so app updates are fairly infrequent. I haven't had to update my apps yet. Uh, this, even in uh, consideration to the new iOS upgrade, there's more design control on the website and you're not totally reliant on the internet to use um, your app depending on what the function is so you can have some of those static native uh, opportunities one particular uh, framework I wanted to share with you is called Ionic I believe the address is Ionic.io I use the Ionic framework to build my, la my latest three apps um, and I found the experience to be pretty easy However, I'm on the inside of this, so if you're not, it might be a bit more complex. Um, one of the things that I like about Ionic, though, is it listens to its audience. So if you take a look at this, it says pay only for what you use. And fortunately, right now, everything is free because they're in their alpha phase. So definitely get on the Ionic bandwagon and start using their services before they enter a pricing model. I was able to produce three apps during this phase, and I'm, I'm really quite happy with them. They've also developed a WYSIWYG builder that you can download to your desktop, either OS X or PC. And essentially what you're looking at here is I hit new app, I name it, I install the platform I want to build on, and I hit uh, emulate. And on the right-hand side, you're seeing a very bare-bones design of of, a, of an app. This would be a tab-based app and it's all really customized by HTML and CSS. So this is a, a hybrid web-based app that uh, is constructed using uh, easy programming languages. If you don't want to use that, you can also, like I said, look at the templates that are available on Code Canyon, Chupa Mobile. These uh, repository sites are becoming much more popular. Um, I would expect several more to pop up within the next few years. Um, the biggest issue is, are they reliable? And more specifically, are the authors that you're buying templates from reliable and updating their content frequently? The command line interface, uh, for those of you that aren't aware, this is uh, basically a small application called Terminal. And unlike most typical experiences where you go, you know, command N or file N to um, start a new file. Um, 
this, the, uh, the command line interface, simply you type in uh, a number of words and it produces all of the baseline files for you, okay? It's not intuitive for the non-initiated and you may actually have to have an instruction manual on how to use the command line interface, but the, the benefit here is that it's very quick. Um, you don't have to worry about building dozens of files uh, one at a time. You can just hit the command line interface and push them through. So frameworks other than Ionic, like Angular, Sencha, Accelerator, and PhoneGap, uh, you're going to need to know a bit of the following. HTML, CSS, some of the command line interface, PHP, and JavaScript in order to make your apps. But the benefit here is that it's not Swift, it's not Objective-C, it's not some very complicated language for uh, the non-initiated. HTML and CSS are, are fairly easy to, to pick up if you put some time into it. Um, PhoneGap is now an Adobe pro uh, product, so uh, I would definitely recommend that, but know that you will have to buy a Creative Cloud account in order to enable PhoneGap applications, especially if you want to run them through a simulator. This particular application here, AppSpotter, A-P-P-S-P-O-T-R, uh, I just discovered the other day, and anytime I discover one of these new builders, I automatically create an account and try it out. And uh, so far, I've, I've liked the experience. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. Right now, you can make apps for free, um, and the there's no catch. You can build on a number of different devices and platforms. And premium features start at $5, which is, again, pretty cool. Um, but who hosts your app? Like, when you submit it to the App Store, is it your name or is it the company's? Most typically, these app builders, your app will be hosted under their name. If you want to be able to have it Publish under your own account, uh, you may have to pay for that. This in here, right here particularly, can I publish apps on my own iTunes Connect or Google Play account? We are working a solution on this, but right now you can only publish your app under AppSpotter's account. So if you want your apps under your name, if that's very important to you, then going the app builder route may not be the most uh, ideal. But if you don't care, then you have any number of app builders to use, uh, really, at your disposal. This is a, a, here, here are a few screenshots of an app I built for Youngstown Design Works, which is a student-run design agency I manage at, at Youngstown State. This is uh, what the builder looks like within the browser. Very clean, very intuitive, super easy. I love how you can design here, um, but when you go to preview it uh, in the, in the, on your device, you have to download a separate application, scan this QR code, and then it loads your app. And this is what it looks like. So it, it, this is a larger screenshot, but uh, you know, for what it is, it's not bad. It, it has a very basic feel to it. We've got that uh, sliding menu there. Um, this is what the home page looks like. Now, granted, I didn't put a whole lot of design into this, but um, it was super. I, I like this tool a lot, and I think it may have a lot of uh, potential for the future. So testing devices in the iOS simulator. If you're building uh, your apps uh, the more manual way, then getting those apps onto your device, you'll have to set provisioning profiles and app IDs through Apple or Google. Um, this can be time consuming and a bit complex, but it is so incredible to see your app on a device um, and use it really whenever you want. And more to the point,
invited. I'm not prompting them beyond that. I just want baseline first impressions. And as a designer, uh, it's a bit vague, but that information is critical. Here are some images of the UI. We can't see his PowerPoint anymore. And uh, ultimately, the submission process. Apple is much more rigorous in the reviews of submitted apps than Google is. Uh, Google apps are submitted uh, with more frequency, reviewed with more frequency, and approved in an exceedingly fast turnaround compared to Apple. Um, where Google could take days, Apple could take weeks. If your app is rejected by Apple, prepare to wait. And the app builders, if you're concerned that your app would be rejected by either platform, know that um, Pardon me one second, I guess we're having a technical issue. Well, uh, I can keep talking because this uh, particular slide just has text on it. But um, the app builders are sort of streamlined and designed with the design guidelines in mind for both platforms. Um, so you typically won't have any issues. I use the Ionic platform, and I do not have any problems at all. If you guys can still see me, that's fantastic. Um, sorry for the issues. I might be having a lag on my end. All right, let me go to the next slide here. Um, like I said, my last three apps were with Ionic, um, and they've been met with no resistance from Apple. Uh, PhoneGap, I've used that and have had success with it, but have not submitted anything beyond that. Um, so if you get any, uh, if you try any of these app builders and you have some positive feedback or no resistance from Apple, please let me know, and uh, I'll definitely add it to my list of sort of tried and true app builders that I can recommend to my students. Um, as I understand it, some slides were missed. Uh, rest assured, folks, that uh, th some of those were just all text. So um, if you get hear me talk, then you certainly got the message across. Um, I'll bounce back very quickly, though, just to show some of these images that I submitted to try my UI for my test audience to critique. And again, it's just an open critique. Here's some more, um, this is a screen capture of what the app looks like on the App Store, which is a very uh, redeeming feeling after you've spent hundreds of hours, well, I don't want to say hundreds, but significant amount of hours on uh, working with your application. And that's what the icons look like uh, on the phone or within your menu. Uh, again, it's a great feeling. So what is the best method to learn all this? Um, Again, I, I would recommend self-initiated and self-paced. I believe that everyone is capable of producing this app, especially if you're using app builders or WYSIWYG tools. Um, but the custom frameworks, if you take some time and invest in them and read it in some of those manuals uh, and tutorials, you'll be okay. It takes time, effort, and patience regardless of however, uh, of whatever route you take to get there, okay? Formal classes may give you a basic deliverable and knowledge, um, but they may not give you everything that you need to make the app that you want. So my advice, uh, enter the fray on, you know, solo and uh, make mistakes and fail forward. And uh, there's just a few resources uh, that I recommend checking out. Uh, this one on SitePoint.com uh, has uh, the top seven hybrid mobile app frameworks. Uh, that is a particularly good read, and I'd also recommend Ionic and PhoneGap if you're looking to um, do this more on the manual side. And with that being said, if you want to follow my progress and research, you can go to IamRJThompson.com. Uh, there I have 
still frames, screen captures of all my research, particularly with app design. And I also have links to uh, some of the video that um, you can check out on my progress. So this would be just a, a typical uh, testing launch. This is through PhoneGap. And you can watch those at your leisure. So um, thank you for your time, everyone. Uh, Carl and I, I defer to you. If there are any questions? Yeah, thank you, RJ. Thank you so much for that. I love the insights and the useful pointers for all of us. We do have a few questions from our listeners. Um, first, one listener would like to know whether mobile websites have finally become as robust as mobile apps. Uh, if you could elaborate on that. Um, I would say that's probably true. Um, it depends on the functionality, though. Uh, so to give you a frame of reference, my, uh, my particular hybrid apps are routed through WordPress. Um, WordPress has a number of just hundreds of thousands of available plugins that I can build into the site. But one of the things that I found is that some of those plugins do not translate to a touch device uh, fluidly. Uh, as it would on a, on a desktop or a laptop. So um, I would say, yeah, they're probably on par with one another. Um, you might not get a lot of the interactivity and sort of animation-like uh, effects that you would on a um, mobile app. And it really depends on the specifics there, because you can use HTML5 in both contexts. Um, so it really depends. Ultimately, uh, I defer back to the different experiences, different audiences um, conversation. Excellent. Um, another question we have is, does UX affect UI, or does UI affect UX? Uh, it's completely symbiotic, uh, either way you look at it. If you have, a, a friend of mine always says to start up uh, technology companies, you can have the best user interface in the world, but if the content is shallow or the application doesn't do anything, then the application has no soul. Inversely, you can have the best idea in the world, and if your UI is, is awful, then it's going to tune everyone out and it will become ineffective. So I think that the relationship is symbiotic and trying to strike that balance between proper, uh, clean UX, um, or rather a clean UI will deliver uh, equally, equally clean and memorable user experiences. Right, totally. Um, another question we have is, what are some decent screen resolutions and sizes for educational apps like yours? Uh, well, my apps are built to accommodate the screen size that uh, the app is being you know, displayed on. So um, this is a bit responsive. So basically, with the design that you see here, that's designed with iPad and uh, iPhone dimensions in mind, and it will restructure itself based on that display. We're at a point now where, if we, depending on how you uh, set it uh, within the CSS, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, you do not have to set a particular width and height. It will just automatically respond. Um, that's one of the benefits of using the app builders or the uh, Ionic or PhoneGap frameworks. Right. Great. Thank you. Um, and at last, we have a listener who's a senior in college and would like to know what advice you have on getting into the UX field without having much industry experience. Um, I would say a lot of my UX uh, experiences would probably um, be best defined by what I've experienced in the field and not through any sort of uh, uh, class-based learning. Um, I would say that uh, if that particular person could, you know, offer some really great uh, sort of case studies on things that they may have built or analyzed, I would say having a, a blog and you know, discussing the issues and principles and, of UX and doing so with frequency, that would be a really great entry point for them because they're talking the talk. Um, and then if they could also offer some type of case studies uh, like that, like they could use Try My UI and generate a lot of good feedback there, 
um, that would be ideal as well. Um, or, you know, they could build their own apps and test them out and, you know, demonstrate another skill set on top of analysis of UX. Great. Thank you, RJ. Um, thanks for being the guest speaker with us for this month. It was a pleasure having you on our webinar series. Um, and for those tuned in... Good to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> to our listeners, please send in your comments and feedback at hashtag TramaUIEDU. It should be in that chat box um, on the webinar panel. And we have a video of this webinar available on our website soon if you'd like to replay it um, and revisit some of the insights RJ shared with us. Um, until next time, thank you everyone for joining in. Thank you, RJ. Cool. Thanks, guys. Take care.